I call it strange blessings of the beatitude. Strange blessings of the beatitude. The beatitudes are a series of blessings. These blessings were given by Jesus to his disciples during the Sermon on the Mount. Each blessing offers a future reward to the person possessing a specific character of charity. This is powerful. So the Beatitude sometimes I want to break it into two. The be attitude. Be attitude. So it means this should be the attitude of the sons of God. This should be the attitude of the children of God. This should be their character. This should be how they are supposed to live. This should be how they are supposed to live their life. This should be the attitude. The attitude. So be attitudes. Are you getting it? Say so when you do this, this is what is there for you. When you do this, this is what is there for you. When you do this, this is what is there for you. Which were taught and preached and declared by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. That is the beatitude. So the beatitude is a very powerful. That's why I call the strange blessings of the beatitude. It's, the, it's not the usual blessings. It's not the normal blessings we know. These are strange blessings. Anybody walking in this blessing is strange. I'm, I'm telling you, you, you can't be like the usual person. You can't be that normal person. You will become a strange person. The strange blessings of the beatitude. See, the beatitude, when you look at it, when you study it from the book of Matthew chapter 5, and you, you study it properly, it's like the declaration of the oracles of God. And he opened his mouth, that's Jesus, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11 says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you forcibly by my sake, for my sake. Numbers chapter 6. Verse 23 to 25. Speak unto Aaron unto his sons. Say unto this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel. He says, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons. Say on this wise, you shall bless the children of Israel. Say unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. So the blessings of the Matthew chapter 5 is in a way correlating or corresponding to this particular blessing. The priests were commanded to bless his people. And so when we read the Numbers chapter 6 verse 24, it says, The Lord bless thee. This is how you are going to bless my people. It says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. So the blessings make the Lord keep them. Okay, keep them. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. It means the Lord should reveal his face. The Lord should reveal himself unto you. The Lord should cause his face to shine upon thee. Another verse also starts to reason that the Lord should release and I mean the blessing should produce favor unto you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord should be gracious unto you. The blessing will make them see God. God is going to reveal himself in the camp of, of Israel. Such kindness, such favor, the Lord is going to be gracious unto his people. And the Lord is going to send help unto them. And the Lord will lift up his countenance upon thee. The Lord is going to visit his people and lift up his countenance. His presence is going to manifest among them. He is going to lift up his countenance. And give thee peace and give them peace. The, the Lord wants to cast them away from all kinds of struggling and trouble, affliction and torture and torment, confusion of faces and confusion of heart. The Lord wants to settle them from every form of troubles and anything that, I mean, worries that they will go to. Say the Lord will settle them in peace. He will give them peace. So these are the blessings that you release upon my, my people. So Jesus being the high priest, okay, being the priest after the order of Melchizedek and not just after Aaron, Jesus being the high priest was declaring how we those who are coming to him or coming to God through him, Jesus Christ, this is how we are also going to encounter this kind of blessings. 
I, I hope you are getting it. De he was declaring the oracles of God. He was declaring that particular oracle. He was speaking as an oracle, declaring the oracle of God unto um, his disciples. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And I will bless them. These are the witnesses of the, of, of the sons of Aaron, of Aaron and his sons as priests. These are the oracles they are supposed to declare unto the congregation of Israel, unto God's people. Okay, unto God's people. Now, let me show you something quickly. Let's go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. The Amplified says, Blessed, number one, he said, happy, he said, to be envied and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, are the poor in spirit. Are the poor in spirit, the humble who rate themselves insignificant in the sight of God. So the first blessing I'm going to talk about tonight, that the Son of God, we that have come to God through Jesus Christ, this is a strange blessing. Anyone that goes through this process find himself in this blessing. All right. The first that the first one is that you ought to become poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. This is not the normal poverty that you understand. Poor in spirit has to do with, I mean, a person that is spiritually bankrupt, a person that spiritually he sees himself as nothing before the Lord. As he sees himself empty before the Lord, and it also has to do with a person, uh, a person desiring more of God. Are you here with me? So the poor in spirit is not the one that physically looks poor. When we say somebody is poor in spirit, a person that recognizes that he's nothing. I mean, he's insignificant. He's nobody in the sight of God. In the sight of God. To him, he knows that he can never become anything outside, outside God. This is a poor in spirit, a person that is poor in spirit. Not that a person that is poor, as in the person that does not have money. That's not what the scripture is saying here. A person that knows that without God, I can't become. Without God, I am nothing. Without God, I cannot make it. Without God, I cannot achieve it. With, I am, in fact, I am, I am nothing without God. He is the one that the Bible says is poor in spirit. He knows that the only person he needs is God. He needs God strongly to survive. If God does not step in and God does not come in for him, he cannot survive. Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrast spirit. Their spirit are broken before the Lord. Luke chapter 18 verse 10 give us one profound word that has to do with a person that is poor. It's we said two men went up into the temple to pray. The one is a Pharisee, the other is a publican. Verse 11 says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortionist, unjust, adulterous, or even as the publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Verse 13. And the publican standing up also, you see the two men, listen to this. One is not poor in spirit. He tried to tell him, tell God who he is. You see, I always say that the people that, I mean, find themselves have nothing before God. These are the powerful people. These are the very powerful people. Let me tell you, the Bible says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. So to, to those that the kingdom of heaven belongs to them, are the people that, de I mean, they are dependent on God solely. They, they don't have any independent character. They don't have any righteousness on their own. They don't have any self-righteousness. They don't have any form of um, 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 willpower. Okay, they don't have anything that they stand up or base on. They look up to say, this is my survivor. This is what is keeping me. I have this one. I have this one. They don't boast about achievement. They don't boast about what they have been able to do. The poor in spirit only boast about the Lord, 
boast in their you see their hunger and their dependence is on the lord so in the luke chapter 18 the verse 11 has to do with a person that is poor in what in spirit that is the um the the, the the public Luke chapter 18 verse 13 says and the publican standing afar off will not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smooth upon his breast saying God be merciful to me a sinner be merciful someone that's standing before God and looks very insignificant look as nobody all right these are the poor in spirit I tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbly himself shall be exalted you can't go to God and be boasting of your the 25 days of fasting your 30 days of fasting your no, no, no don't when you go to God you become as nothing even though even even if you are fasted 40 days you will not go and stand to you will not go and stand before God and count the number of fasting that you have fasted when God appears to you when God reveals himself when God manifests himself in his camp in the congregation of his children we become all of us become nothing you wait you see, we put that have not account, people that have not yet encountered God, these are the people that boast so much. These are people that are proud. They, 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 are, they have some pride in their spirit because they have not yet encountered God. They have said a little about God. Because if you truly encounter God, you will see that you are nothing. In fact, you will need God more and more and more. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2 says, For all those things have my hand made, and all those things have been, have been, said Lord, but to this man, man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, trembleth at my word. So you understand the point, spirit. Somebody that trembles at God's word. Somebody that fears God's word, fear God, fear God. When he hear, when he hear the word of God, he trembles, he shakes, he he's so humble, he's so broken. This is a poor man in the spirit. He humble, he humble himself before God. He said he has a contrite spirit. This is a poor. He said this is the person the Bible says. But to this man will I look, look even to him that is poor. So God said, I, I am the one that made everything. I created all things. But there is one thing that, uh, there is one man I will look upon. The one that is a poor person in the spirit. And that one has a contrite spirit. And trembles at my word. Genesis chapter 18 verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Please, here am I, who am only, who am only a dust and ashes, undertaking to speak to the Lord. When Abraham appeared before the Lord and he was he was trying to speak to the Lord, look at what he said about himself. He said, I'm only, okay, I'm only but a dust and ash. When it comes to God, when I'm standing before God. So who are those who stand before God in the boast? And they think, oh man. I, I always say that when you meet God, you'll be humbled. You'll be broken. Those who have met God, those who have truly met God, they are broken. They are hampered. I'm telling you, it does not matter how anointed they are. It does not, it does not matter how powerful they look. It does not matter how, how they exhibit the powers of God. They are hampered. They have an humble spirit. Job chapter 40 verse 4 says, Look, I am insignificant. What answer can I give you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Oh, Jesus Christ. So you meet God. And your, your poverty does not show, your emptiness does not reveal, your insignificance, you have not yet met him. So, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that when they meet God, they see that their life depends on him. He said, it is a blessing to recognize. He said, you have entered into such a state of blessing and people will have to envy you. He said, you have entered into a state of joy and happiness. He said, you have entered into a state of salvation. He said, you have entered into a state where heaven will help you because you recognize that God is your, your everything. God is the one that your life depends on. And without God, you are nothing. Recognizing that the law, he said, you are blessed. Job chapter 42, verse 5 and 6 said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in that in dust and ashes. 
when Jacob, uh, when Job heard, when Job heard, when Job heard the voice of God, when he heard about God, he 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 he, he said, "I therefore despise myself." He saw himself as nothing. He himself despised himself before the Lord. 